everyone. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper, and welcome back to Build. The NBC show The Village follows tenants in a Brooklyn apartment building who are more like family than just neighbors. Today, I'm sitting down with Lorraine Toussaint, who plays Patricia, a social worker who takes care of everyone while hiding her own life changing secret. Take a look. I need to ask a favor. A man who's been forging documentation for immigrants was arrested. He's been rounding up all the names they found in his things. Yours was one of them. What are these? Letters from Iraqi professors who apparently don't exist, stating that you were a political dissident whose life was in danger. Your ex-husband submitted those with your application for asylum. I didn't know. When she went to the end. My ex-husband arranged for the translator. He could have been saying anything. Let's just focus on today. Mm -hmm. Proving that you're not a flight risk and getting bond granted so that you can fight this from home. And why would the judge believe me? I'm already a lawyer. In my experience, it's never too late to tell the truth. Put your hands together for Lorraine Toussaint. How you doing today? Good. Good. So The Village is out. People yeah. have gotten to check it out. What has the response of feel like back been like for you on social media with new fans of the show? Um, so, uh, fans on social media are loving it. Yeah. Um, I think people are really hungry for this kind of show. And uh, uh, there's been a really great, great, great response yeah. across the board. I do love all of the different themes it explores, and we'll get into more of that, but the overarching theme is just the importance of community. And I think in a time where social media and people are very much in their own worlds, we're seeing how neighbors are connecting. And you don't, you know, I live in New York City and you don't see that and it's sort of, I watch and I wish I had that, you know, that connection with my neighbors and the people around me. You know, I think we've lost that. Yeah. Because I grew up in New York. I was, I spent 10 to, 10 years old to 30 years old in New York. Mm. And I lived in buildings like the village oh. where um, I had friends and family in the building uh, when I was lived in Brooklyn, on Eastern Parkway. Hey, <laughs> Brooklyn? Hi, Brooklyn in the house. <laughs> and then in Hell's Kitchen, mm -hmm. when Hell's Kitchen really was Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> um, I lived in a building that had eight, uh, four floor, four floor walk up, two sets of tenants in each floor, and. You know, we knew each other. I mean, we had barbecues in the courtyard, and we we really did look out for each other's uh, apartments. If you heard something in the night, you opened your door and you looked out and you went, "What's going on?" You know. So, yeah. That's. I think that's amazing. I, I've been here for almost ten years, and um, I have not had that in my uh, current situation. My landlord really looks out for me, and I know him. But I do think I like watching this because I hope that there are buildings like this because I feel like in New York everybody kind of sticks to themselves. I think we've gotten away from that yeah. and if there's any takeaway for the show it's maybe yeah. let's get back to that a little bit yeah. and uh, if you don't have a village where you are because I think we always we always crave for a village. Mm -hmm. If you don't have one start one. Right. It's not hard. Yeah. That's a really good takeaway and your character really I think is the glue in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us about Patricia? Well, Patricia is, um, she's the mother hen. She's the go-to girl. She's the one you come to uh, in good times, hard times, and everything in between. Um, she's mom, the grandmother. You know, I love playing Patricia because I get to live in that part of myself that I don't always get to live in, which is the wife and the mom, um, the caretaker, which is quintessentially who I am. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to indulge that part of myself in that. And the writing is so good. The the actors are, are so terrific. Mm -hmm. I'm 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 loving this. I've loved shooting the first season of this show. The thing I love about Patricia too is she is so strong for everyone else. And we see that for black women in media a lot, being kind of the strong and we don't get to see their interior selves as often. Yeah. Right? They're just these people for everyone else, but nobody's really taking care of them. What I love with Patricia, she has her husband there, and you get to see their intimacy and how they take care of each other, and I think that's really important. And it's, it's, it's rare to see um, 
<laughs> what is now considered a middle-aged couple. Right. Oh my God, when did I get to be middle-aged? <laughs> um, but to see your mom and dad yeah. um, in love, mm -hmm. you know, emotionally, physically. I mean, we're very affectionate. And uh, so I'm really loving that we're bringing this kind of couple and, and a couple of color. Mm -hmm. I love that we're bringing this kind of couple to the screen. I agree. What do you do to prepare for Patricia to make sure that you're showing her strength and her vulnerability? Because I do think when I watch, I get that balance, and I know that that can't be easy because, you know, each scene you kind of have to play differently, I guess. You know, I, I actually think... I tap into as when we greeted each other. These, I, we, we, all, we both yelled, yay, black girl magic! <laughs> yeah. Um... But to some extent, black women, we get the rap of being strong and maternal, and um, we don't always get the rap of, we don't get the credit mm -hmm. for being vulnerable and um, needing help mm -hmm. and needing to be held and um, the softer sides of us, which exists and all I think I do is I, I just show up and bring all that girl to the table. Yeah. Is it fun to play a more emotional role? Because I've seen you on TV my entire life, and you've been in medical dramas, and you've played lawyers, you've played a prisoner in Orange is a New Black, and uh, kind of stronger, tougher women. This is a very emotional role. Is it good to kind of dig into this kind of different person? Um, I, have, emotion, I, have, I, I have a good, I have, I have, I have a pretty, um, healthy emotional capacity. I mean, I'm, I don't shy away from my emotions in my real life or otherwise. So I think what mostly what Patricia does is it allows me to play much more the center of my wheelhouse than Badlands, for example, where, you know, I'm doing wire work and and martial arts, and and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a religious zealot, <laughs> which is so not Lorraine, um, or you know V, bless her heart. Um, that I definitely brought up a different aspect of myself. But Patricia is, she's very sweetly at the center of of who I am. What do you think about the themes explored in the show? Because um, each character, each family, really is trying to overcome something pretty profound, whether it's a teen pregnancy or being deported or something that's really heavy. So why do you think it's important that the village is tackling kind of these really relatable but difficult topics? That's one of the reasons I wanted to do the village, because of the, the kind of diversity that um, was on the page yeah. and uh, the issues that we would therefore tackled because of that diversity um, were, were relevant and important to me. Um, I, the issues of an aging parent, we, you know, you get to a certain age, you, we all deal with that. And what, what do you do? Um, immigration is, is a hot spot for me. I'm an immigrant, proudly an immigrant. I am a, I am a poster child for the American dream. And so that was very important to me. Uh, wounded, you know, wounded warriors. My my husband is a, he's a, he's a, he's an ex marine. Well, you're never an ex marine. Sorry, simplify, dude, simplify. Um, you know, so I've got those connections. I've been a single mom for most of my life. Uh, I've raised my daughter until fairly recently on my own. So all of these issues were very, very personal to me. Wow. That is amazing that you can find that personal connection to each. That must really tie you to the material. Is that something you look for when you're picking a new project? It is something I, tie, I look for. And, and um, the fact that all of these characters have an intimate relationship with Patricia, yeah. it's not hard because of my personal connection. But how I choose roles, yes, it, 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 it has to... <laughs> it has to diddle some really intimate part of me. <laughs> and like Cressida, um, really tickled my, my geek. Mm -hmm. 
there's a real geek in here too. And so that's a sci-fi geek and futuristic and um, Octavia Butler. And I'm that girl. I've read all the Dune series, all of the, 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 the Anne Rice series. Oh gosh, so that's my genre, except nobody casts me that because they always see me large and in charge and then, you know, <laughs> Never off the grid, yeah. so um, it's nice. I'm getting to the age where I, um, I'm happily wandering off the grid. It's great. It's big fun. But that's one of the coolest things of getting to watch you is that I read that you have three different shows and three different movies this this year, and all of them seem to be so distinctly different. different. And yeah. I feel like that's so rare, but also so much showing your talent and your versatility. Uh, one of those you mentioned, Into the Badlands, that's coming up, right, for the final season. Yeah, it premiered last night. Yeah, so what are your feelings as that's wrapping up? I had a great time doing Into the Badlands. <laughs> I mean, we were shooting in, in Ireland yeah. for a year, and so I was living there with my daughter, and uh, um, a whole new genre that I'd never tackled before. Uh, all the fight sequences were were, were uh, this Hong Kong style of martial arts and all the wire work and, you know, hoisted into harnesses and being flipped. And, and when I'd sign on, there's fight camp at the beginning of the season. And I said, look, could I avoid the fight camp because I really... I don't need to break anything at this point. I got a child to raise. And they said, well, you know, you won't be doing much fighting. And of course, the first day I get on set, what am I doing a fight, right? And so I did say to them, look, Cressida, is a, she's a prophetess, right? She's a seer. Is there a different way that she fights? That only went but so far, right? At some point, I found myself in a harness being hoisted up into the air, you know, 50 feet. But it was really, really fun. Yeah. I like doing things um, that I haven't done. I like pushing my own personal envelope. Yeah, I was going to say, what a fun new challenge to have at this it point was. in your career. Where yeah, I like, know. I don't want to put on that harness, but like, let's go. Let's go. Let's, let's go. Ooh, Why not? They are uncomfortable. <laughs> Uh, you're also it. going to be a part of the Gloria Steinem biopic, yes. uh, which I'm so excited. You're going to be playing Flo Kennedy, which, if you guys don't know, is just one of the most impressive uh, female feminists, activists, civil rights activists. I mean, and then her style and how she presented in the cowboy hats. And I mean, tell the me. The helmets and the yes. cowboy hats and the cowboy boots and the accessories. Pink sunglasses. And oh, yeah. I remember learning about her and just being so attracted to just how authentic in herself she was and how hard that must have been, especially at that time. So take me through how you are approaching Flo or what you're most excited to sort of, for people to learn about her through this biopic. Well, you know, when you when, when you take on a character that, um, a real life character that I, I always feel a greater responsibility to, to get that right. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> people are watching, people have known her, people love her. She's an iconic figure in, in many realms. What the, th the thing about this film is, uh, and Gloria, the real Gloria Steinem, whose birthday it is today, happy birthday, happy birthday Gloria. Gloria, she's 85. Um, she really wanted to make sure that women, the women of color who were, uh, is, um, who were pillars of the, the second wave of feminism were recognized. And oftentimes the, the press and history really wasn't particularly, they weren't particularly interested in, in these women. So it's wonderful how many years later to be bringing these women. Uh, that Shirley Chisholm is in the film and, and, and Barbara Jordan is in the film and all of these extraordinary women of color who have helped to shape the feminist movement, that which we are, we are all, like yourself, you beautiful young woman over there, are, have benefited from and are continuing to benefit from. So um, it feels like an honor yeah. to play Flo. And she was, she was brilliant and cray cray. Yeah. I love some Flo. Mm, yeah. Some Flo. Did you uh, have an opportunity to talk to Gloria at all? Or what kind of research did you do to make sure that you kind of could embody Flo? Um, I had a short conversation with Gloria, but um, Julie Taymor, who is the quintessential filmmaker, 
uh, we are making a Julie Tamor film, undoubtedly. And so uh, there was one night I, I emailed Julie and said, you know, th this, these lines aren't quite right. Mm -hmm. By then I'd known, I've known Flo's voice and her rhythm. And I said, this is not written in, in flow right. language. And she promptly got on the phone, called Gloria, and said, what would Flo say in this situation? And Gloria then related back what Flo, what her Flo would have said. Yeah. And it was so dead on. It was a, a wonderful toast in the film where Flo is toasting Gloria. So, Because the two women traveled quite a bit speaking. Yeah. So they knew each other they were pretty the speaking you know, intimately. And I, I love that Gloria could be a resource in that way. Yeah, and, 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 and Flo taught Gloria how to be more authentic and how to speak up and, and be fearless, because one of the things Flo was was absolutely fearless. That's what first, when I you know first learned about her in college, that's what I loved. Yeah. She was also an Aquarius like I was, and I was <laughs> like, just fearless, it's like take it on, Ooh. go, regardless of what people She's think. so brave. And that's so brave, especially yeah. in the 70s. And, yeah. uh, so I can't wait to see that film. I'm really excited about it, and I know, I've heard a lot of people in my friend group talking about it, so oh, good. we're excited. Uh, another film you have coming out is called Fast Color, yep. which, Fast Color. Kind of leaning back into the more sci-fi-y part of you. Yeah. Uh, this one looks, it's basically about a, a mother who's a superhero. Is that kind of like a? It's even better than that. It's three generations of black women, mm -hmm. black girl magic, literally, who have um, unusual abilities. It's post-apocalyptic. Um, it's dis a dystopic drama where these women have been hiding out for generations because of their powers and their abilities uh, for fear of persecution. And uh, as the film opens, my daughter, I'm raising my granddaughter because my daughter, the middle generation, has left. And she, an incident happens where she is in trouble and she has to get home very quickly. And uh, it's a story of what happens as a result of that. And these three women are now on some level on the run. Uh, it's a wonderful film. Yes. And they are superheroes. They do have extraordinary powers. But the thing that um, Julia Hart, mm -hmm. who's the filmmaker, wanted to make sure she said all superhero films with Men are, they destroy things. It's, and let, don't get me wrong, I, I love me some blow up films. <laughs> blow it up, shoot it up. But she wanted to do it that with women, our abilities, we create things. That's one of the, in each one of us does very different things. But all of them are based on creating. I've read a few reviews of the film, and um, something that was really consistent was that your performance is really dynamic, and especially, I don't know, I haven't seen the film yet, but there's a scene where maybe you have to fight, and it's just a very, I've heard. Oh, yes. So can you? Oh, yes. We haven't yeah, yeah, seen yeah. it yet, but I, I would like to know, like, for you, in pre preparation for that scene, and what was that day like? Well. Those days like? Oh, gosh. It, I'll give you the good answer, and then the, 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 <laughs> the uh, unconventional answer. The, it's about fighting, and it's about it's a coming of age film where each one of these women come into their own, right? And oftentimes we're most afraid of our, our of our true power. And as the matriarch of the group, I think she lear I learned from my daughter and my granddaughter how to really step into my full power. And it, when she does, it's powerful. The day of shooting that quintessential fight film, that was three days in the rain, a, with a rain machine in, in New Mexico, where in the winter, so it was about 30 something degrees, with a rain machine, which is barrels and gallons and gallons of, we were wet all day, and the water in the rain machine was water that came out of the fridge. It was literally refriger <laughs> refrigerated water, and we were soaked to the bone for three days. I've never been so cold in my whole life. And 
the director there's one point she said could you could you try to not do the scene could you not shake <laughs> could you stop your teeth are chattering could you can you guys hold yourself from shaking and there's one point we got so bad that we were trying to devise ways of staying warm. We literally started wrapping our whole bodies in saran wrap <laughs> under the clothes to try. Oh God, it was um, it was something. Oh, I can't wait to see that scene. Yeah. Now. that's what I love knowing because I'm like I'm sure it looks this beautiful, you know, choreographed. You scene, can't tell we were f we were yeah. freezing to death. Before we wrap, I just want to say like uh, you're just somebody I've seen so consistently in TV and film my entire life. The roles you take on, I think, always say something. Um, male, female, male, black, white. I just you're so present, and I just want to know like what does it mean for you to be able to continue to evolve and change in this industry? Because from everything I hear, that's hard, and people love to keep you down or put you in a box. But when I look at your work, it really does seem like you've somehow have been able to navigate around those obstacles. I'm sure it hasn't been easy, but I want to know like what your experience has kind of been like in that regard. Um, oftentimes the business is designed to make us feel powerless, right? And I've, I, I learned early on the power of the no. And as difficult as it is, has been to say no to certain things, especially early in a career, um, I, I knew that there was power in it. And there are some things I just said no to. Um, I don't know, luck, some of it is luck. Some of it is, you know, dance with the lady that bring you to the party. You know, I, I speak a certain way. I, I'm a colonized creature, so I automatically sort of got these sort of upscale roles, which I'm really trying to break out of right now. I'm, I'm trying to get down and dirty. <laughs> um, but uh, I was kind of fortunate. I didn't get any, I, I wasn't offered a whole lot of booty roles. So I didn't have to navigate the booty world. So that was helpful. Um, so some of it was just the package, you know, <laughs> the package that my mother and my grandmother and those aunties put together that I had no choice about, and here I am. Um, but also, mm, I have a particular taste. I always knew that I wanted to do a particular kind of work, and I, I wanted to do work that's relevant mm -hmm. and important to me. And um, fortunately, I've kept going, and it's... And now I'm, I'm, you know, almost 60, and I'm brave again. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to be taking risks in the work because I kind of don't care <laughs> anymore. You know, I, I, I don't have to be cute. I have, so I can just do interesting work that's interesting to me. Yeah. So hopefully it's interesting to you too. I love that. That's my favorite part is like when you just are like, I'm doing this for me. Yeah. When you kind of stop getting, doing things for other people's. Yeah, pleasure. I did that. I learned that early though. Yeah. That's an important thing to cultivate yeah. as you're coming up. Um, do it for you because then you've got the power. No one can take that from you. Because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, shit happens. But if you're doing it for you, uh, that's when it's real good. Yeah. Then you walk away no matter what. You're good. Right. No regrets. <laughs> Je regret rien. What I she said. I regret nothing. I know our audience has a couple questions. So who do we have first right in the front? Hi, Lorraine. Hello. Brooklyn in the house. Hey. So you have an extensive body of work in television and in film. Do you have a preference? I got to tell you, there, there are so many television platforms right now that I feel like I'm doing film work on television. And where in the past there was a real delineation between film and television, um, it's, it's less so now. And you're working with film directors, you're working with um, so There's a certain, still a certain cachet, a certain you know, rep that goes with film, and I'm right there with it. But there's also about indulging and, and, and exercising one's artistry, 
there are so many opportunities in television to do really genuinely interesting work. Uh, I'm very happy to be uh, still on the stage, as it were, in this renaissance of television. On that note, theater, you've done also in your career. Yeah. Any goals to <laughs> do that again? I, I knew you have three movies, in, you know, three films. You've got a busy year, but is theater something that you still love to do, want to do? Yes, I'm in New York now. And so, yes, I'm entertaining a couple of, of, of plays. Yeah. Probably I will be back on the boards in the next year. Sometime in the next year, I'm, I have a meeting tomorrow on an interesting play. And so I've done a play in, ooh, 13 years. Ooh, it's time. Yeah. It's time. Lord, that's hard work, though. Ooh. Well, when that all happens, you come back and we'll talk about Girl, it. You know, I will. The theater scene here is in such a good place. I'm yes. excited. There's, There's so exciting many amazing... theater. There's exciting theater yeah. happening now, too. Yeah. So un unfortunately, I'm being inspired. Ugh. <laughs> Last question. Hello. Okay, so I have an online question, and it's, what's the craziest interaction you've ever had with a fan, and how did you deal with it? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I was in Times Square walking with my daughter, and one of those Disney characters, <laughs> which terrified my child anyway, and uh, they actually snatched my baby's hand. Ooh, no, 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 no. I mean, uh, you know, that black mama uh, multiplied by V, you know, <laughs> uh, came out and it was like, I believed I scared the bejesus out of her because, uh, and now when we walked there was the other day, we were again walking through Times Square, and I saw one coming, and I just channeled my inner V, and I literally saw that poor, whoever was in that suit, <laughs> literally jump back, because there's some scary folks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. How can you say your inner V? Because that first one was, he yeah. was in a bear suit, and he was clearly drunk. <laughs> it was like, he was in a full-on bear suit. And actually grabbed my, ch grabbed my child. At least it wasn't Elmo. Mm, no, Those no. Elmo's are drunk in there sometimes. Right? I know, that's, 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 that's that whole thing, that whole yeah, situation. that whole like, thing. To, to be avoided. <laughs> Is V a, a character that really sticks with you? You mentioned her, and uh, I mean, she was so, so multifaceted, and I feel like misunderstood in a lot of ways. Like, I, I. Girl, you know, I, I always thought she was just misunderstood, right? too. She did some troubling things, but at the core, I knew that she came from a space and she was just doing her best, and I just, you know, I don't know. Yeah. She stuck I, with you I a little bit there. I loved V when I, was, when I was channeling V. <laughs> I loved her. Uh, somebody needed to love her. Right. That baby needed love. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I, the interesting thing about these characters is that they're all, they're all in there. Mm -hmm. They're all in here. Uh, there's no other place to look for the work other than the self right here. Mm -hmm. And so... It's nice to explore myself as I'm exploring them. Mm. And it's nice to be surprised by who shows up to the party sometimes. Uh, I'm, I'm oftentimes as much an audience member as you are as to who's showing up. It's like, oh, <laughs> oh, I didn't expect that. <laughs> it's nice. That makes it sound like you're probably really fun to hang out with. <laughs> well, uh, maybe. That might be fun. Yeah. Well, I'm happy that you have taken on this character of Patricia um, because she really is, like so many women I know, specifically my moms and aunts and these caretakers, and I just really enjoy watching her story unfold, and I know audiences will as well. So thank you for taking on that role. If you guys want to check out The Village, you can check it out on Tuesdays on NBC. Tuesday nights, 10 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you.